Hello fellow gamers, welcome to my brand new channel. This is the very first video on my channel. Um, I decided for my first video that I would play Oxygen Not Included, which I've been playing for a very long time and quite enjoy and I feel like it's a pretty fun uh, game to watch people play. So, and it's pretty, pretty simple, you don't have to interact with other people, just play and record and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So we're going to start a new game here. I have a, I have an old game on here, but we don't need, I've made so many new games. It's, I actually quite enjoy it. Starting fresh, always keeping the settings simple and basic. Well, for those of you who have never played Oxygen Not Included before, um, it was basically a sort of similar game to Minecraft, but it's all 2D, flat. Um, you're basically born, sp spawned inside the middle of an asteroid. Um, and the entire game plan is, well, it used to be you just survived as long as you could, but now there's actually an end game sort of mechanic where you can build a rocket and take off to the planets. But uh, it takes a while to get there and we'll see if we get there in this this colony. This colony might die. Not gonna lie. Let's see. So these are uh, starting duplicants. They are the beginning things. These are your people that you control to and you help them survive by telling them commands and telling them what to build and all that fun stuff. Um, they all have their own traits and skills. So like narcoleptic, it's basically they could fall asleep at any time no matter what they're doing. Kind of a waste of time but it's not the worst bad trait to have. Like slow learner, they just can't learn. None of these skills will go up they won't ever increase their ability to do anything, so let's just, let's get rid of that. I always try to have someone with at least three or more learning, because learning allows research speed, as you can see, and that is extremely important to the beginning of the game, as you'll find out later. Um, digging's also pretty important. Let's see if we can get. Ooh, that's. Good. And you can't research, but that's okay. You don't have learning. I won't put you researching. That's pretty good. Some some of my colonies I like to have everybody plus learning because even if they're not researching, it still increases the level up speed of just the regular skills. Um Let's see here. Got a lot of pluses. Let's let's see if we can get a someone with really high learning. A five is pretty good. You can't cook. That's okay. You'll be researching the whole time. So that's that's actually pretty good. Let's let's see what you can get here. And so yeah, grease monkey just. Increases that, mole hands, increases digging. The benefits usually just increase skills. Um, there's some really good ones like uh, deep divers lungs, because oxygen, oxygen not included, oxygen is a very uh, valued resource in this game. Um, and what deep divers lungs, well, just divers lungs does for you is decreases the amount of oxygen your duplicates use. Well, just the one that has divers lungs. Um, It's not bad. Farming's pretty decent. Uh, yes. Yeah, see, his good, but he really has nothing else. And pacifist is probably the best trait, negative trait to get. Because combat really isn't ever a thing. You don't really have to fight creatures unless you don't need them, and then they you want them out of your base. You can just blow them up. Combat. Um. We already have good digger. Good cook, but yeah, see, this is a pretty bad one to have. Um, food is also another valued resource. Um, because it's all closed environment games, so what you make is what you have, and what you 
build, so you can eventually run out of resources. There is a way to get around that. Uh, you have to explore the map pretty good. There's things like geysers that give you water. Um, there's volcanoes to give you metals. So you can you can get some stuff through there, and eventually you can get specific and un unlimited things depending on your geysers. Creativity might actually be good. Because uh, stress is a big factor in this game. So if you're doing things that make them stressed, they can eventually reach uh, a level where they start to go crazy. And well, like this guy starts puking everywhere and this guy starts eating all of your food. It, it gets pretty messy. You usually don't want to let it get there at all. Let's see here. Plus five athletics. Let's get this game going. Plus five learning. Could get two. Nah. Let's see if I can get a learner. Oh, that's good. Gastrophobia can't cook. Looks like you're the only one that can cook. Well, that's that's not a problem in the beginning of the game. You usually don't cook until the next duplicate shows up. I'll show, I'll explain how that works too. Ah, oh, well, since this is my first colony on, on YouTube, let's keep, keep it simple. Oh, that's wrong. That's wrong too. Not even looking. The first disaster. Come back. So it generates all this terrain before you even begin the game, before you choose your duplicates. Um, so pausing time is <laughs> super important uh, in this game. It lets you take a look around. So. So every thing you could do in here has a has a hotkey on the keyboard. So just pressing space pause it. It's pretty pretty nice. Um see everybody starts off with five stress, but usually goes down to zero pretty quickly. So digging lets you explore, but it also expands the vacuum so basically by digging this out you create an empty space where gas has to flow to and for the starter they're they're pretty nice they created this uh oxalite in the game for you so basically gives you an uh early oxygen without having to worry about how to create oxygen because um if i just show you here the first game mechanic that lets you get oxygen is an algae deoxidizer which I can only build if I get some metal, like this copper ore down here, which I have to dig to. So it takes some time, but eventually you can get decently far. we we'll also want to get this water over here, because toilets and all that is another simulated thing in here. You need water to wash your hands. Otherwise, germs, it's a huge, complex uh, simulation. And I'm s I am sorry if uh, I'm a little boring to talk to. This is my first video, so I'm not really sure what to do here. If anybody listening to this, well, you know, I don't expect a lot of people to see my first video and uh, immediately. So, but if anybody does, I wouldn't mind in the comments section any suggestions of what I could do to improve the list the the listeners' enjoyment. Because I do enjoy playing this game, but... It, oh, wow. That's actually pretty rare. So I got I got distracted. I'll explain that in a second. Um, yeah, if anybody could leave any comments in the comment section of how I could improve the viewer enjoyment of my recordings, my channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, back to the distraction. 
there's this is a steam vents which steam is just hot water so these are your unlimited sources of water sometimes they're slow what's what's this that's actually a pretty good one uh this is on the top end of kilograms per second um so this will give off a l about and one kilogram of steam is equal to one kilogram of water in this game. It's just kind of how it works. I believe. Um, basically what it does is it, uh, it goes through a cycle of letting out steam and then sleeping and letting out steam and then going dormant. And it'll go dormant for cycles, which are your days. Well, how did you guys get... Okay, well, another problem with this game is duplicates are stupid. <laughs> it must be pretty hard to get a pretty solid AI foundation for these guys. So, you know, you can't, ex you can't get too upset at the game if you don't really understand. Oh, shit. Yep. Like, they'll just build tiles over their uh, fellow duplicates' heads, suffocating them until they die, if you don't pay attention. Let's get a move on. So building tiles increases decor, and decor helps them stay non-stressed. Um, also increases their run speed, so they can walk faster on fabricated tile than they did on just regular ground. So that's another reason to do it. This pitcher pump is the only way you can access the water. So basically the pump water out of it. And uh, it can be sent to food collection, well, food production and sinks and all that. It's, there's a way to automate it with pumps and stuff. But that's after you get power and a bunch of research done. Which we hopefully will get to this episode. I honestly have no idea how long to record for. Because it is my first. So bear with me on that part. Just trying to get a, a way to let this water down into here so I can build across. And actually cover this with tile and build my bathrooms over here. Bathrooms are super important early game. Speed this up a second. So yeah, you can go regular two times, three times speed. This just increases the speed of the day. Let's you see things and fast forward. Um, so our oxygen supply, we got actually a decent amount right off the beginning. Um, so that should last just a while. And so duplicates are like they uh, are treated like regular people. You in uh, inhale oxygen, exhale uh, carbon dioxide. So this will eventually build up in the base and we need to find a way to deal with it. So like, yeah, they can't breathe in there. So you see they're running to oxygen over here to breathe. Hopefully they finish that ladder fairly soon. Oh yeah. And they won't go to spots they can't reach. So you can give them a command, but if they can't get there, then uh, you're out of luck. You just, if you don't notice it, then it can be troublesome and a waste of time. Okay, so they finished that there. So if I go like this, hopefully the water will just run down and not spill across. Usually doesn't, but I've seen it do it sometimes. And while duplicates can't swim per se, they can walk through water. I don't know if they're ever gonna, like this is still early access game. It's been early access for probably way too long but they're almost done they said the developer said that they're almost done working on the game so I don't know if they'll ever add a mechanic like swimming but we'll see and duplicates can reach up to four tiles high which is actually perfect for uh, rooms and stuff I like to keep my rooms four high and then like another tile here, and then four, and then another tile. 
So basically, this immediate biome is the most comfortable living area in the game. It's uh, the perfect temperature for duplicates to stay not too warm, not too cold. Like, you can see just where my mouse hovers, there's oxygen at 22 degrees Celsius. Pause the game. Nothing to do right now. Um, but if we go over here, 30 degrees, which is okay for them, but it's getting warmer. And then we get over here, where uh, this is the hot climate biome, where it's 42. This is pretty warm. It, it doesn't hurt them at all, but eventually they can get a sickness from just being too warm. There's also a cold biome somewhere. It's usually, they used to spawn right beside the comfortable biome, but uh, they removed that, I think. I'm not really sure why, but now you can never get a cold biome to spawn right by uh, the temperate biome. <coughs> So, yeah, the water that comes out of here is pretty hot. So we're going to have to put a temperature barrier here pretty quickly. Otherwise, the heat will just bleed over. Because this puts it out at, yeah, 110. Because this water boils at uh, 100, obviously. So, 100 degrees Celsius. Let's see here. Yeah, we should build those toilets I mentioned. Outhouse. Basic stuff. And we want to wash something to wash our hands on. Should give them a priority too. Let's make these the first things they do. Yeah. <coughs> we'll have a door. So these doors are the first doors you get. So they uh, allow airflow through. So you won't ever have to worry about oxygen running in here as long as you got a supply. Yeah, it's starting to go down too. But hopefully they can get this running before they need to go to the washroom, which is probably coming up soon. It usually takes one washroom break per cycle. There we go, yeah. Ah, shoot. That's not good. See, now the polluted water will go into there. Yeah, I wasn't paying enough attention there. So we'll need to get a ladder down there. So that they can mop up this tiny bit of polluted water. Yeah, we're starting to get food. Um, okay, so germs are a thing. Food poisoning comes from any bodily excrement. So like poop vomiting on the floor and all that and it can contaminate your water supplies now I believe yeah they just die on water but it takes a while it's only 3% of 500 per day so it takes a long time but food poisoning in the water actually isn't terrible it doesn't really do too much to your duplicates um, eventually it goes into your food if there's a large quantity it could be bad but 512 and oh yeah there's a thousand but it can get up to like 10 million and it gets super that's when you really want to find a way to clean your water so these have arrows you basically you can walk past them this way but if you're dirty going past them this way to the right they have to stop and wash their hands so I don't make them waste the time going into the washroom but when they're done, they have to wash their hands, otherwise they could spread germs that way. Um, best way to get rid of germs is to disinfect, but they can only do it on solid objects. So if this ever becomes disin uh, infect, germinated from the water here, and you just go like that, and they'll they'll clean that up. Should get this mopped up too, so I can use that area. Build that. Don't want to dig too far this way. These uh, these blocks are acting as a heat barrier. Not the greatest, but uh, it works. This stuff in the game is uh, absolutely, I wouldn't say extremely heat proof, but it takes like, you won't have heat go through these tiles in the game at all. And you have to have a trained specialist 
to dig these out. Oh yeah, they're done doing that. So let's dig this block, let the sand fall. So if any of you have been watching and you've been seeing this guy, this guy, this guy, they're, they're the creatures on the asteroid. <clears throat> so hatches eat your stuff on the ground and they produce coal as instead of poop. Um, these guys, they're a light source. So these the duplicates have enough light that they can see. You don't really have to worry about it all that much, but there is a light level and they do feel more comfortable around light. So this is where they store their food for now. You can, you can move that. Um, this is what makes duplicates. This is where your original three came from and where you can get one more duplicant every three days. Now, eventually you don't want to, you don't want to keep getting a duplicate every three cycles. You'll eventually run out of uh, ways to make food for them, provide bed space for them. Eventually you just run out of room and supplies to feed that many duplicates. So I usually, I usually stop around eight for my first couple hundred cycles. Let's see, what do we want the duplicates to do? That ladder will eventually, you know, actually, a, yeah. I'm going to turn that into a tile. I usually have one main ladder going up and down the base and one yeah, one way up and down the base. Because if there is a, a ladder on this side and a ladder on this side, it can cause some lag on the game. Um, because the duplicates now have a choice to go up the first ladder or the second ladder, and the game has to make more calculations to tell the AI where to go. So that's why I would. That's why I only do one ladder. Lots of other people do it with as many ladders as they want, but I prefer to have the least amount of lag. Deconstruct that. These are the plants of the game. Now you can't see all of them here, but you can see most of them actually and right in this area. Um, muck root is a one-time thing. You you dig it out and you eat it. You can't really plant more muck root, but it's pretty good for the starting point of the game. Um, Bristle blossom I almost never use. It requires a light source to keep it growing um, and a water supply. So that's you don't want to use your water up too early. But this stuff right here, mealwood, all it requires to grow is dirt. And that is the simplest thing. Eventually, if you if you use this too much, you will run out of dirt, and there are better plants to do. Um, bluff briars, they produce nothing other than they look nice to the duplicants, so they provide decor and help the duplicants stay relaxed. Pinch of pepper plant, basically the spicy nut, spicy fruit of the game. They're uh, hard to... They're not terrible to keep growing, but they have to have a relatively warm body temperature, so they can't be grown here unless you have a heater with them. So, I don't think I've really ever made pinch of pepper plant farms. Um, balm lilies are useful for medicine. You eventually get to the point where you can make medicine and just in case you begin to get sick. Mushrooms are my f absolute favorite. This is what I pretty much supply my entire duplicates on for most of the game. All it requires is slime, which is pretty much a garbage resource once you get further on in the game. And it's, I mean, slime's a pretty dangerous thing to dig into right away too, so we usually start with mealwood until we're comfortable with going to dust caps because the slime is full of slime lung, which is out of the two germs in here is food poisoning. It can make them sick for a little bit, but if they get slime lung and they get infected, they could die like really quickly. And so you usually don't want to get them in, exposed to like, yeah, like 30,000 germs just in this one pocket per tile. Uh, I think he's eating. I think that's what that animation is. Yep. 
<laughs> Eating apparently is sitting right on the ladder. Okay, let's get another room up here. Yeah, so right now they don't have a bed. So there's nothing for them to sleep on but the ground. So at the end of the next cycle, I think we should have our uh, next duplicate. Well, I think it looks like it'll be halfway. Only says half a cycle left, so. Oh yeah, and um, to uh, manage their time better so they keep more work done. Like things that don't need to be disinfected, like the toilets, you just disable disinfect so they don't keep running there because if a block or uh, building gets too in too germy, then they automatically go do it. You could turn that off, but I prefer to keep it and just selectively disable disinfect on some buildings. Because no matter how much germs this gets, if you clean it, it just gets more germs and the duplicates are germy anyway. So just disabling that saves time. They wash their hands here anyways. This gets rid of pretty much all the food poisoning germs. Doesn't work so well on slime lung as far as I know. Well, that pr that's pretty much full of carbon dioxide. Sometimes it's nice to just have pits like this where the carbon dioxide can fall into. Let's, let's tell this that it can hold mushrooms and muckroot. Even at three times speed, sometimes you wish it, they could uh, get the game going faster. And I, there's a way you could do it. I've seen some other gamers do it, but uh, it turns it on to like ten times speed. And that, if you're not paying attention, just can destroy a colony. Algae here, probably one of the more useful things in the game. Algae is your oxygen supply, so once you get uh, these algae deodorizers going, which I should probably put one up, um, they are your source of oxygen until you can turn water into oxygen, which is why these things are super useful. Because as you can see, the oxalite already emitted enough that it stopped. So once it gets a high enough pressure, like this is pretty high pressure, 3000 is really high, they'll stop producing because there's just too much pressure for it to release. But this one just expanded this entire area. and You can see the oxalite's gone already. Mm. Well, I guess I'll choose a new duplicate. Loud sleeper's pretty bad. If you have them near other duplicates, the other duplicates won't sleep and they'll be slow the next day and they'll get more stressed, so you don't really want that. This guy must have had pretty good, yeah. So he had a plus four base and then he got negative three because of his downside. That's not a bad one, but see flatulence, basically they emit natural gas, which can be turned into power later, but it can flood your base pretty easily. So it's not always the greatest to have it early on, but that cooking, that plus the cooking is pretty good. Yeah, I think we'll choose Mary. Welcome to nighttime. That's what you get for falling asleep in the water, man. I should build them beds. Well, hopefully they'll dig this out right away. Let's uh, actually prioritize that side. Hmm. I'm 
I've accidentally turned those to six. Nope, nope, we're good. We're still on five. And yeah, if you're not paying attention, sand can like fall through holes that they dig. And uh, the moment one block becomes encased in sand, you can't use the building anymore. So you want to get, get that dug up as quickly as possible. Okay, let's build some beds over here. So in case any of you are wondering why I encase this with a door and wall, there is a thing called rooms. Um, so it has to be within walls and a door, and then you can, depending on what's in it, you get a, a room bonus. So this is classified as latrine, which needs one toilet, one wash station at least, and then a minimum of 12 tiles and maximum of 64 tiles. What it does is it increases the duplicate's morale. Um, which is, which is fairly new. Um, morale's never used, never used to be a thing that existed until recently. Um, it makes the game a lot simpler in determining how, st how stressed your duplicates are going to end up. Let's see here. What do I want them to do? Let's build a power station. That's pretty important. Um, yeah, let's build a power station over here. So I can run on that batteries to hold the power yeah <laughs> the basic power generation is a hamster wheel your duplicates just run and run and run and run forever basically until the batteries are full um, then what we want well, we don't have enough metal for this okay so we need to get some metal the research station is next I'll let them build that while I figure out. There's some metal. Easily accessible metal. I also... These storage compactors are how you hold the stuff that's on the floor, so that's how it picks it up. I like to build an early one for algae and an early one for the seeds. So this, this is like a mealwood seed. There's a blossom seed behind there. This, oh, it's idle, so just waiting till the next pressure build up. Once it's dormant, then you never see them produce water for a long time. Okay, so you go in here. All seeds can go in there. Um. Organic is where algae is found. And then you just turn them to six so that putting stuff in there is more important than a basic dig and stuff. So yeah, see they already they already have this powered up, so we might as well power our deoxidizer. And I'm going to have to build a room for these beds, eventually. Unfortunately, sand fell out of that space, so... Well, if I build a ladder, and then tile, tile, tile... Oops. Thought I clicked on the door there. So they can reach door. This should hopefully turn into a barracks, which also increases their morale. Yeah, they're starting to run out of oxygen here. So many seeds. And algae. Well, hopefully they build that copper wire pretty soon. 
There they go. Okay, so we need that oxygen. Which algae do we have? So this this thing right here can tell you everything that you've dug up. So not the total stuff that exists in the map, but just what you've dug up and is accessible to you. Or is in your storage and stuff like that. So we actually have a pretty decent amount of starting algae on this map. It's nice. And a fair amount of water too. This will last a long time. Oh, looks like we've done that. Um, we should have enough metal for a research station. I can build that and a power line to it. Yeah, I usually don't do this, but let's actually make a starting thing for metal as well. Oh yeah, and there's a thing called priorities too. So you can tell a duplicant that he can never research. But this guy, the guy who's good at research, is allowed to. And that's what he'll mostly do. So let's see, research. And... We want better batteries, so this is usually the best one. These two are the best ones to go to first in research. This lets you turn carbon dioxide back into some oxygen. This actually, let's do this one. So this also, um, so eventually when the toilets get full, they get plunged out and polluted dirt. So they put dirt in and then they go to the washroom on it and then it becomes polluted dirt and they pull it out once the toilet's full. And that just sits there. But with a compost it can be turned into fertilizer, which is usually what I put here, what I left space for here. Looks like they finished this, that's good. Oh yeah. And they immediately become idle because it's not much to do in the there's not too many complicated things to do in the early game. Um, metal. All of it. And then once we get some research going, then we just start to dig out our base. probably want to dig into this metal space pretty pretty quickly and so when you're new to the game these are actually fairly useful to just read up, up on but I usually just click through all of them because I've played this game so many times I've seen them all so here's some new critters that I haven't explained to you guys um, Paku fish basically don't really do anything other than be a fish. There are special breeds, I'll explain, I'll explain breeds later on, but uh, that can give some benefits. Um, puffs basically turn polluted oxygen, and you'll see he gets bloated there, and then the polluted oxygen gets turned into lumps of slime, <laughs> which eventually, funnily enough, turn back into polluted oxygen. So. You can turn a farm for these guys so that you can automatically collect the slime before it turns back. But if you just continuously pump your bad oxygen into here, they'll clean it up for you. It's pretty nice. Ooh. So these blacked out areas are ruins. They're old, like, areas of the asteroid that you apparently used to be colonized. And uh, you can find some pretty cool stuff in here. Hopefully we'll get to that. Probably not this episode, but maybe next. I'll probably dig into this area pretty quickly here.
actually probably getting pretty close to the end of the episode here. Oh, yeah, so research happens fairly quickly at the beginning, especially when you got a plus five on your learning. Basic research goes pretty quickly. And then once you've done research, exclamation points show up and they, they'll they show you what uh, area you got new stuff in. So I got a planter box and a ration box, which are brand new, because this was the only thing here before. And it unlocked possibilities for your next research. So let's put the compost up. I think we'll take the duplicant right away. I don't really need it at this point, but I think I can... I think I have enough stuff going on that I can support another duplicant right away. Another problem is, eventually when there's too many duplicants, there's not enough bathrooms for the duplicants, so... And then messes start happening, and I'll have to t pay attention to that too. Let's choose... Who wants to go to sleep right away? Um, actually, I'll probably choose this duplicant and call it the end of the episode at cycle six. So let's see. What do we need? We don't really need any. We got a pretty fairly balanced colony right now. We definitely don't want loud sleeper. This guy's pretty basic. So I don't think we need him. Biohazard. This guy gets sick really easily. Nope, maybe. Maybe we will choose him. Biohazard just can be pretty bad. We'll choose you. Go to your bed. Okay, well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this ep first episode on my brand new channel. Um, have a good day, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode.